Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to the Artist Next Level podcast. We are very happy and excited to be here with you. There's three of us today, and there are... I'm gonna I'm gonna part again. Sorry, sometimes I need to warm up for a second. Okay, there we go. We're not live, so that's a good part. Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to the Artist Next Level podcast. I am super happy to be here with you today. There are three of us today here. We're gonna be sharing about that emotional moment when you are in the studio and all of a sudden you find something that works. We're going to try to talk about that, describe it, what it feels like it, uh, what emotions come, in, come with it, and how far can we take it. So we're going to bring our experiences, uh, our ideas, and it's going to be great. So with us today, we have, of course, our good friend Drew Harris and I, who will be hosting the, the episode. And we have a special guest, Very artist... Special. Yeah, artist Lee Morrison. She is based in Portland, and uh, she's one uh, an artist who we have met through the Artist Next Level program. She has been in our program for quite a bit. She was also an artist who participated in the Weevil Art Retreat that mm -hmm. we have done before, and uh, we have been witness of her success in her career, uh, starting from scratch recently and coming from another career and building something you know brand new. And uh, it's been really exciting to see. Her success uh, going through the, the also uh, the process of finding her voice and uh, also experiencing great successes from that as well. So, Lee, welcome to the show. Drew and I are super happy to have you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sergio. Thank you so much, Drew. I am very happy to be here. Very honored to be here. Um, this is uh, yeah, fantastic, and uh, I'm very excited to to talk about these uh, things, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to just dive into it. That's exciting, and uh, Drew, it was really good also to chat with you last week. We had got some really good comments on the previous mm -hmm. episode about uh, you know the the struggles and the the hustle you know that we have gone through. So in this episode, we will continue yeah. sharing stories. But uh, how are you? Good to see you. I'm good. Yes, I'm very good. Yes, and uh, this this segues in nice uh, mm -hmm. to what we're going to talk about today because, yeah. you know, we all have our struggles and, uh, you know, uh, we know that of you, of course, Lee, have, you know, transitioned from one career into another uh, and doing very well with it. So it's it's really exciting, and you know, and there's always struggles and we love to hear about that stuff. Mm -hmm. So feel free to tell us all you have. <laughs> about your about about your success, your you know struggles, your wins, your losses, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and yeah. you know, yeah, that's awesome. I was thinking about you know prior to coming to today's conversation, you know, about this idea of uh, finding something that works, right? Mm -hmm. When you go in the studio, it, it's it's a search, right? It's a constant search to find that what works. And at the beginning, it's difficult. And, and I was thinking, you know, the three of us here, Drew, you were the first one who found something that works because you've been making art the longest from the three of us. Mm. Um, I would be in the middle and then Lee, you know, after that. So, it, you know, I would uh, like to hear from the three of us, you know, talk about, you know, the first time that you felt that you found something that works and and even I, I always say works in between quotations, right? Because like oh, yeah. there's, yeah. it's like a mystery word how that happens. So, um, who wants to go first? Well, Lee, you're in the hot seat today. So. <laughs> All right. Well, I will um, share a little bit of this. And again, I am quite new to mm -hmm. to all of this. So a little bit of a time frame. Um, I've been painting for about probably eight years, maybe um, a little bit on and off, um, just teaching myself how to paint. Uh, but about a year ago, I decided to show my art. Mm -hmm. uh, or a year and a half ago, I decided to show my art. I used to paint a little bit here and there. But a year and a half, I said, hey, I, um, I think I am ready to, to show my art because I don't know what I'm making. I have no idea what I'm making. Mm -hmm. and, um, and this happened when I switched careers, as Drew was saying. I, um, I am a dentist. 
And I sold my private practice about uh, May of 2021. Mm -hmm. And right around November is when I signed up with the artist neck level. And, uh, and I was ready. I was absolutely ready. And uh, yeah, we did we evolve. And uh, I think that was monumental for me. Because I still remember when I was showing you guys my different paintings. Yes. And I had done a little bit of abstract. And I think I had paint a face here and, you know, a dog there. And <laughs> just trying, trying to do my due diligence and continuing. Mm -hmm. And then you guys saw one of my paintings and one of these and said, Hey, I think that's something. I, I think you got something there. Um, yes. And Sir Hughes said, yeah, I, I remember that from your Instagram. And mm -hmm. I think it has the right amount of abstract and the right amount of, you know, figurative. I had mm. no idea what you meant. I had to look it up. <laughs> what is figurative? Because I was I like, love it. I love it. what is he talking about? And then I went, okay, I get it. And I think I always knew those trees were dear to me as opposed to other things um, that I had painted before. Um, because when you're trying to paint and I think you're new, well, first of all, you have this massive imposter syndrome mm -hmm. that right. you have to get rid of that. And that's probably a whole other podcast <laughs> of how to get And it rid of never that. goes away. <laughs> I just aim it for a little bit. <laughs> that really far from me. And mm. I'm very grateful um, because I think I was always doing that dance with it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, this cannot continue to be a dance between me and the imposter syndrome. Like this needs to be a duel to the death. Like one of us is just going to die, right? Either well done. My art or it. And um, and yeah, so I think it's 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 pretty far now. Um, and that's tremendously has helped. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And actually, um, Dr. Yanina has a lot to do with that and that book. How to Crush <laughs> Self-Sabotage. That, mm. I used to take that book and go read it with my goats uh -huh. <laughs> uh, in the summer, last summer. And uh, and I did the exercises. And But in any event, I think when you realize that you have something is when you see, and this is how I take it, right? To some, finding your style or finding what works might be you know, what is selling or what looks like something else or what looks trendy or what looks cool. To me, finding your voice in mm. your work, it's when you're so true to yourself, making your art, that it becomes really almost mirror-like like a reflective, a reflective surface. Um, and then when people look at it, huh, ironic enough, they hear themselves. Mm -hmm. Of course. I think that's kind of sort of how I see it. Like the more true to myself and the more I put my voice into my paintings, the more it resonates with my audience and they they see themselves in it and they hear themselves in it and and then it's about them and i feel because of that then that's successful um yes. i feel like when you don't have your voice or when i was in my early stages there was nothing to see in my work and it was mm. murky so people would look at it and there was nothing that reflected back um, and so it didn't exist, right? Because to me, a piece of art exists when it's being appreciated, when it's being looked at. I can create it, but it, to me, it becomes a real entity, almost like a pet, because it's a, it's a real entity. But when people are looking at it and people tend to see themselves when they connect, right? And the artwork makes them 
maybe answer so many questions, right? Or so gosh, I have, huh? so I have to interject here for a moment. Yes. <clears throat> First question would be: So, do the goats get any uh, credit? Uh, for, for, for this. Uh, yeah, no, and, yeah, and I think yeah. for our listeners, we have to explain, you know, you went from dentistry to paintings in this conversation, and then you mentioned goats. Yes. So uh, I was going to ask you, like, some yeah, of our friends are going to think, what is, what, is yeah, that now, now, what is this woman doing? She's a dentist. Is she know. an animal dentist? Or uh, <clears throat> you live on a farm uh, and you raise goats uh, in, in uh, Oregon, and uh, you were previously a dentist. But I do really like what you said uh, about this mirror concept mm -hmm. and understanding that point where you made that transition and, and all of a sudden uh, it connected with your audience. And, you know, if you look at your work, which is beautiful and right behind you there, you also have that metaphor in the work. There's a reflective quality uh, where the, the viewer sees as a mirror or something of glass-like. So I think, you know, you've transitioned really well from that, from that where you said the work was kind of murky uh, and really, un, you know, undefined. And then you moved into something and it was an instant. You sort of knew it. This is your direction. And you could set all of that murkiness behind. Um, so, yeah, I think you, you, you did that and are doing that. So that's very, very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I remember, you know, that Weeble session where, uh, mm. you know, you share your work and you talk about it. And we looked at, you know, some of your early fractal pieces and some of the figurative pieces you were working on. And we kind of all said, yes, you know, that's that, ab you know, the abstraction that you're working with. There's something there, right? There's something in it. And you went on and you actually worked on it, you know, because there's one thing yeah. when you actually listen <clears throat> and then you do the work. Or, or not right and you decided to actually take upon that and go back to the studio and keep working at it making it more making it more which at the beginning they were looking all too similar but then you started to you know learn from them and start to also evolve as well and that's a beautiful yeah, process I, to see there's a yeah it, I, you know you you refer back to this we've all and i remember that moment when we had that chat mm -hmm. yeah. because you were showing us some figurative work uh, and you were showing, you knew it was your new work. It was your, it, the reason you were there was to, to show and identify the, you know, a positive direction in your work, something that, you know, we were a sounding board or we were the mirror, uh, mm -hmm. looking back and saying, okay, Lee, you've got, you know, you've got the figurative work, you've got this other work, but here, I think this is something that you, you really have, and maybe you're even unaware of it, that this is a really, this is something unique. And I think you heard it. And uh, that's the success of this Weevolve program, that you are a good example of someone that really heard it. And you took it back to your studio and you started working toward it. Uh, you know, there are people that don't want to take that chance. They understand it, but they're not entirely sure that they can pull it off. You went back in with complete confidence. So there's your, you're no longer that imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. you know, of doing so many different elements. Now you've got something that is very strong, very uniquely you, and you knew it. And you yeah. just started working and you worked every angle of that. So mm -hmm. well done on that, you know. Oh, thank you. Uh, you're one of our our big success stories. Thank you. It was, <laughs> it was monumental. It was, it was truly, truly monumental. I mean, just deciding to do it and, and mm. opening up showing you guys, I didn't know. And, you know, um, for you to say, Hey, there's something there. And yeah. Drew, I remember you said, ah, those figuratives, no. I remember you were like, no. Nah. <laughs> Excuse going me. To, yeah. Well, I apologize if I did that. No, no, no. And I loved it because this is what you said. And again, a lot of the things from back then, now they make sense because I yeah. understand more about art. And so you said, no, those figuratives, no, no, Lee, you're going for pretty. That's boring. <laughs> and I was like, what does he mean? But then you said... Well, you talked about the trees, Drew, and then you said, if you 
want me to elaborate in anything I said, feel free to, to message me and say, hey, Drew, can you expand on whatever? Mm. And I still need to take you up on that because <laughs> I still, you know, don't know much about. And I thought, I don't want to waste his answer and I don't want to waste his elaboration when I still don't know much. So I still have that chip saved. <laughs> well, OK, well, anytime, but, anytime, but, as you know. Yes, but because sir, he also tells us exactly how to apply ourselves, how to do yes. due diligence and how to systematically approach the, the, the steps on that ladder. That's sort of what I did, right? He mm, says, mm. hey, now do this, now perhaps do this. It's and all a process. Yeah, it's, it's a process, process in a sort of numbered in a way, you know, and you go from step to step. Very similarly yeah. explain mm. things the way I like to learn it. Like, Lee, this is the end goal this is how you need to go about it. And so if you want to achieve, you know, this, then you need to go through this, but this is also going to have a multi-step. So then we need mm -hmm. to do this, but in a very organized way. And I just did and started doing it. I'm still doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's, that's um, great. It's, and then when I hear, so in the show today mm -hmm. or last night, um, a lady was looking at my paintings and of course she explained it was like tax season and she wasn't going to be able to afford it, which is not here or there. But she said, oh my gosh, she said, I love your art. And she looked at one of these pieces and she says, I can almost hear them. Wow. And I was like, wow, like that mm -hmm. validation. This is an interesting, mm -hmm. this is fantastic that you say this. It. Because there was something, you know, in my in my own personal research of your work and what we're going to ask you today, things yep. that may just come out of as a surprise. One of the things that your work always reminds me of is if anybody here has ever been through a, an ice storm, which I think both of you probably have, mm -hmm. being in the north and the northwest, yep. uh, the the idea that the, the the trees have a sound to them. The trees, when they sway, will have yeah. this sort of almost like a tinkling sound. Mm -hmm. And that's what your work always reminded me of. Aww. It's <laughs> like an ice storm, but in pure fall color. <laughs> oh, that's amazing to hear. That is amazing to hear that. <clears throat> Thank you so much. That just me. <clears throat> makes my heart sing. Well, here you go. <clears throat> but, but those are the moments when you yeah. say, hey, I think... Yeah. That is my voice because people hear the mm -hmm. things that they love the most, they, the of things course. that warm their hearts. You, you right. hear your things. And it's because yeah. I have been true to myself when I put the brush on the canvas. I'm not focusing on pretty mm -hmm. um, because art is supposed to make you feel something. So mm. I put that brush to the canvas and I am sort of being true in that journey. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how um, you find your style. And of course, you have to have feedback from people. Mm -hmm. Of course. You know, and this I, is going to change. Your your done, career yeah. will change, uh, you know, even after this weekend show that you've just done. Mm -hmm. uh, your work will change again based on the comments, based on the reaction. Mm -hmm. There's going to be certain pieces that, that garnered, you know, great reaction. And there's going to probably have been some pieces that kind of were looked over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can feel it. Then you can really guide and judge, you know, what you're, what you should be striving for or the next direction. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, Sergio, if you can talk on that, because I think it's yeah. a, it's a really important thing where you pick up on elements that are your strengths and mm -hmm. back to the weave all just quickly. That was the thing that I, I never, you know, I, I feel kind of bad now because I said, you know, okay, put the nudes and the and the figurative work aside. Well, oh, I did no. feel I did feel that your strength really was so uniquely you in the series that sits behind you, rather than um, because I think we're all trained in in the figurative work and the nudes and that kind of thing. And until you master it, really, uh, and master a, a, something that is identifies as, as yours. It's just in another group of 
figurative mm -hmm. painters. Yeah. And I, I, while I don't discourage that, I encouraged the one element that perhaps you were slightly unsure of. No, I, and absolutely. You, and you went ahead. You went ahead with it. And I oh, think yeah, I think when you're starting, like, let's say it's the same thing. If you're starting and you yeah. want to find your style, you're going to try 10 different things uh, until it becomes your style. If you want to apply for, let's say, a gallery and you're starting, you're going to apply to 10 to get mm. one. And the Absolutely. way I see this and, um, and, and Sergio said this, he said, the reason why I get yes is because I get so many no's. I remember he said that last year. That's a great quote. It hit me like a truck. And mm -hmm. I remember that. I have this mm. gift to remember what people say. Um, in any <laughs> event. And so the Especially way when I they're talking about our art. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the I way forget, I always remember. It is, I'm not going <laughs> to think that nine of those are failures and mm -hmm. one mm. is success. Or I'm not going to think that I painted 10 different things and nine are you know, total failures in one is success. The way I think about it is to find the one, it takes an effort of 10 mm -hmm. because you will find the one if you put the effort of 10. Right, but you yes. can yeah. think about it's nine failure and one win is you will get the win. It's a process. Effort mm -hmm. is a 10. Now, when you get the one, then your number two probably takes an effort of nine. When you get a three. Now you're getting math. into like the math of it. <laughs> it's how exactly. my mind works. Wait a minute. I got to write that down now. <laughs> you have a calculator. <laughs> and, and I know so, that, you know, yeah, as you know, as, as you're finding more opportunities, also mm. your confidence level begins to grow. And that's yes. something that, you know, we talk uh, in on Instagram Messenger, you know, this idea of, you know, the you start finding those opportunities, those opportunities kind of help you realize the value of your work too. You begin to charge more for it, you know, mm -hmm. without feeling like, you know, am I charging too much? Because you, now you have more confidence and confidence also, it has like this mm -hmm. energetic uh, force that also when you put yourself out there with confidence, you attract more yeses, you know, in a, in a strange way. Mm -hmm. um, it always happens. And, you know, of course, not everything is a yes, but you'll find more of it just because your confidence level is at a, it's higher and uh, you you are more unstoppable. You're an artist on a mission, right? You're more that's unstoppable right. in that sense. Like, well, that person said no, that's OK. There mm -hmm. are other 10,000 who could possibly say yes. And I always say, you know, you may there's a good point that, to yeah. reflect to what Lee is doing today, yeah. as opposed to some of, you know, the people we know. Uh, they get that one no, and mm -hmm. it just annihilates them. Yeah. It just sets them back, and they say, you know, I don't think yeah, I'm going to continue again, exactly. to pursue. Yeah. But what Lee did was, you know, they, she took your advice for, from the marketing perspective mm -hmm. uh, and, and knew that a failure is not a failure. Right. Or a no is not a no. It's actually just an encouraging yes. Right. It's kind of pushing you into the next level. And if, yeah. you, if you let it affect you, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be sitting at home thinking, I wish <laughs> yeah. I did this right? Where, where Lee did it. So that's, a, that's a good thing. So back to you, Sergio. Yeah, no, it, it's, you're, you're like, <clears throat> you may be, and for our friends who are listening or watching, you may be one ask away from the big jazz that will change everything in your art career. Absolutely. One, you may be just one ask away and that might be the one that you gave up, you know? So that's, that's something for us to, to think about it. You know, sometimes there's one yes that can change your entire career as an artist. So we we keep on asking, right? We're asking people, and that is wonderful. And uh, you know, kind of going back to the topic of like finding that thing that uh, that uh, changes everything in one way or has something of value. Um, I would love to hear also from you, Drew. You know, when was the first time that you found something that you, that was it for you that you <laughs> thought there was there was value in it? Uh, and, and as far as the paintings or, yeah, or yeah, the like reaction from the community? Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah uh, well, well, you the, create something like, I think I got something. He kind of like when Lee, right, started working on those fractal pieces. And yes. He said, I think there's something here and started to make more. How about for you? I, I don't recall really specifically. Like it, mine was a transition. So okay. it, I started as a strictly color field painter working in mm -hmm. 
some of the colors that you work in, Lee, like are really bright, bright, bright colors. I was using text in the work, uh, but, you know, little sticky letters and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was so time consuming. So I think once I eliminated all those time consuming things, uh, I got right into the color and the painting. And then when I realized that my very darkly emotional pieces or very sort of personal pieces were actually, <clears throat> you know, people were reacting to. I was getting more reaction to that than, uh, you know, than the, than the sort of more acceptable work that I was mm -hmm. doing at the time. Uh, all of a sudden it sort of clicked. I think that that was the moment. That's it. When, yeah. That's yeah when someone said, oh my God, it's There's so something dark, there. uh -huh. but I love it, you know, <laughs> and you think, okay, now I went into the sort of researching, why do they like that? Why mm -hmm. do they need the dark? You know, and my, my theory has always been that, you know, I can put work up on, on in people's houses or in corporate collections, primarily in people's houses. So when a collector comes and buys, you know, a dark piece, something mm -hmm. moody, something sort of aggressive or assertive or whichever, uh, not a happy, you know, painterly painting, you know, this is, this is my work, the darkness in it, even thematically might be dark. You know, I've always said, it's actually the collector's way of saying, I don't need to explain myself. I put it <laughs> I on like my that. wall uh -huh. and it, and it says everything about me. Now I don't have to explain it to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That is wonderful. Is I, because people will say, well, why did you buy that? Most people would say, well, why would you buy such a dark piece of art or something like mm -hmm, that? Mm -hmm. And they would say, I don't need to explain it. This explains it. This is, explains my personality. This mm -hmm. explains my taste, mm -hmm. uh, my thinking, my emotional state, everything. So, you know, people buy because they are, they resonate. It resonates with them, mm -hmm. you know, they don't have to explain it. Well, and, so and the, that was, yeah. that was the moment. Yeah. Yeah. That is good. And, uh, you know, it's so interesting how, you know, as we're sharing our stories, you know, how the feedback is so integral for the artist's career, for the artist's totally. growth. When, when we hear that wow or that, you know, reaction, whatever the reaction may be, you know, that all of a sudden we're like, oh, I think I got something here. You know, I think there's potential here. I think oh, there's yeah. there's something that, that triggers, I think, our, our back, you know, in the mind and like, I must look for what that is. Because a lot of times yeah, the other... feedback doesn't give you what it is, yeah. Yeah, and to, on that point, Sergio, is a good thing because I relate it back to what uh, Lee is doing now mm -hmm. and what she was doing when we met her uh, at the Weevil. And mm -hmm. it took a confidence to say, uh, and I think that's just your personality, Lee. I think you're you're extremely, you come across as very uh, uh, confident. You're confident within yourself. Uh, I think maybe it's part of your profession in the past. You know, you, you're able to talk about things. You're able to talk to people. And that's a really important thing. But I think by taking the step to go into that Weevil, you said, I'm opening up, uh, I'm opening myself up here for potentially could be devastating <laughs> or it could be Absolutely. incredibly rewarding. Absolutely. <laughs> and, I think, and you came in saying, well, either way, I'm going to find out that Absolutely. weekend. Absolutely. And, they, and what you took away from it was, now I know <clears throat> I've got the direction, I've gotten the feedback, uh, good and bad. You know, you, you started to realize in that program, you realized where your, your strengths are and your weaknesses are. Right? So you, you went away after that weekend and you just motored into it. Oh, yeah. And I think that, that that's the success of the program, but also the success of the artists that we love to see. Oh, know? yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It was it was monumental. And that's the thing. If we can contrast a little bit dentistry, dentistry does not have that soft spot. You know, dentistry yeah. does not have that vulnerability that art has for me. And mm. I when I paint, if you will, I think I am the kindest to myself when I'm beautiful. Painting. That's beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. I tend to be harsh on myself. Um, 
you know, my life has been, I've always had to work really hard. You know, I'm an immigrant. I came from Chile at 17. I didn't speak English. You know, I have sort of that background. And so everything had to be, you know, go, go, go. Don't stop until mm -hmm. you get to the finish line. And actually a beautiful thing also happened, which has gotten me to the point where now when I paint, I am the kindest mm. to myself. And Dr. Yanina at that we Vault talked about, because I would be really hard on myself when I would not be always painting. And she said that, you know, there are seasons, seasons mm -hmm. to do everything. Mm -hmm. And she also told me to celebrate the little wins, which yeah. I have never in my life done it was always hey don't get distracted you don't deserve this yet get to the finish line and she said that's not how you should approach things she was doing a, a talk for all of us she mm. said it's very monumental in art as an artist to celebrate the small wins and yeah I was, very what? important i should definitely try <clears throat> that but on the note of finding your style and finding your voice, I think we should also, which sort of ties that in, I think, we should pay attention when we're not creating because we are. I've realized this, that when I am not painting after everything that she said, that I am creating. Mm -hmm. Um, it's sort of like I am nurturing the paintings and that's how it feels to me. I don't know if it sounds a little kooky, but I feel mm -hmm. like I am nurturing those paintings before I create them. Mm -hmm. uh, almost like to, like a just emotional gestational period mm -hmm. when I am not painting. And I think we should pay attention to those times because we are creating and we're being true to ourselves and that's what we will put on the canvas and that's what's going to resonate with right. our audience so i think in some of my introspections i've i've realized yeah. that <laughs> right no but, you're, you're totally right and you know once you have the artist mind you're an artist wherever you go whatever you are doing you know the artist is the artist, you know, in all situations. So you may be doing gardening or working with the goats and all of a sudden mm -hmm. you have an idea, you know, you have something that you cannot wait to get back in the studio and get to work, you know, and I think the three of us can attest to that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you may be at the grocery store you, and all of a sudden you see a color like, oh my God, you know, that's exactly what I need right mm -hmm. now. Get, 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 get back click. in the studio. <laughs> I will click. So pay attention to the times you're not creating because you definitely are. And even so that good. will help you find your, you know, style. And then you will be right. like, oh, I think I got something. Mm -hmm. I think I yeah. got something. But you weren't actively painting. Um, so Do you yeah. not think that comes with, I mean, your, <clears throat> your environment, for example, uh, you're, you know, you live clearly you own goats, so you're not living, you know, in downtown Manhattan. Uh, <laughs> so you you are out in the forest. Mm -hmm. You're out in the it, the inspiration comes from the sounds, the visuals around mm -hmm. you, the fall seasons in mm -hmm. Oregon. Uh, so I think that's a that's also an influence, right? Oh yeah. That you absolutely. I grew up in in Canada, uh, and I grew up uh, with big space like the the grandness of canada and uh, and farming and and that reflects in the colors that i use but even to this day so how many years later you know uh, 35 years later i'm still influenced by that initial influence which was my environment right and you do that so well i love yeah. being outside i think i've learned to be a little bit more in the moment because again you know i am wired to always be in the future you know achieving this or achieving that Excellent. or trying to be prolific at this but with the goats in fact i take <laughs> a lot of times the um podcast to the barn as i'm doing the yeah. tour and <laughs> i love to mix the two and I get some pretty cool ideas because I'm in the moment, I'm listening to art, I'm listening to the podcast, and um, and yeah, 
Yeah, yeah it that, happens. Well, it, <clears throat> and I'll give you a little yeah. piece of advice. You know, put a speaker in the barn with the goats because, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I grew up in farm country. Mm-hmm. I worked on farms all my, my young life. Uh, and my father was a dentist, actually. But I, I hung out with <laughs> friends on farms. Mm-hmm. And I remember, uh, you know, there was always music playing in the barns, right? They always had a radio going for the cows or horses or whatever. <clears throat> and I have the greatest story because I did an interview in Canada about my work. Uh, and it was broadcast across Canada on one of the, well, the, the uh, CBC, which is like nationwide. Uh, it was in a time slot like you couldn't buy that time slot. <laughs> And years later, I was home in Canada and someone, you know, I'm way up north in the middle of nowhere at a dinner party with friends in a farmhouse somewhere. And somebody says, oh, Drew Harris, wait a minute. Were you interviewed by CBC, you know, for an interview? And I said, I said, yeah. And he said, you know, I was in the barn milking (laughs) and I heard that interview. I still remember it. And I'm thinking, wow, it's go- It's getting into the barns of it's North America. Into- wow. <laughs> People are milking and cleaning out stalls and listening to my interview. So. That's right. That's right. Milking the goats and yeah, so all of your... <laughs> take your, take your podcast, this podcast, and just dupe it, and then just keep playing it in the barn for your goats. And they'll love you for it. <laughs> <laughs> they'll love you for it. <laughs> they might become artists. <laughs> there, yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and there there's something I really would like to ask you too. I know a lot of about Drew's family, and you know we're good friends. We have become good friends too. And this, we believe the yes. support of the family is also a big part of our successes as artists. You know, in, in your case, because you also changed careers and you're starting embarking in something so totally new. I don't know if you are the first artist in your family or not, but uh, the, tell me a little bit about uh, you know the impact of you being an artist in the family. <laughs> and whatever you want to share course well <laughs> yes my I, I think my family is used to me being a little different so I <laughs> there is no one in my family um was a dentist or or a medical doctor or you know a lawyer um you know everybody my dad just had some high school probably a little bit of college and just for some reason all I ever wanted to to do was to be a dentist ever since I was a little girl I don't know where that came from because I think (laughs) I went to the dentist twice in you know ever if that and I don't even know if he was a real dentist (laughs) no that's even better (laughs) but exactly and so I don't know that was in my mind ever since I was a little girl and my dad was great at sort of feeding that dream and saying, you know, yes, that's that's you great. Go for it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was fantastic until until my, you know, junior year of high school. And, and he said, oh, yeah, regarding that, you can't because we don't have any money to send you to school. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, back in the day and in Chile, you couldn't go to the university unless, yeah. you know, you could pay for it. Yes, that's right. Um but, you know, somehow it, it sort of was all of a sudden that realization, right? Uh, and so I think, I think then, you know, he, he has uh, an aunt or a sister and a brother in the United States. And, you know, I've always heard every since I was little, oh, you know, United States is a different world. It's a different world up there is what I always heard growing up. Mm-hmm. It's a different world up there. And so... I said, um, okay, well, I don't, I don't want to not be a dentist. Like I need to figure this out. And he said, I tell you what, um, I hear in United States, you can work and go to school. So why don't you try that? And I said, yes, I'm going to try that. Um, except I had never met my aunt or my uncle. (laughs) (laughs) And so anyway, it's sort of to give you a little bit of, um, of a, of a glimpse at my personality, yeah. right? And so being 17, um, my dad gives me a one-way ticket to United States and to leave, and right? And, wow. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, bye, right? Because 
<laughs> I'm going to be a dentist. There's no ifs or buts about it because, you know, in that different world, you can, you can do it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, except I didn't speak English, nor I need, didn't know these people. But in any <laughs> event, it, it worked out fine. Wow. And, um, and so, you know, I'm the only dentist in the family. But, uh, but to say that something was missing, you know, um, when I decided to sell the practice would be an understatement. Um, mm. something seriously missing. And my family never knew I wanted to be an artist. Neither did I. Mm -hmm. I think it was so deep down. I didn't know. But I remember when I bought my private practice that it was a really big practice and it had huge hallways. And I thought, this looks like an art gallery. Oh, wow. So you had already set the influence already. And I painted a couple of paintings and I took them to work and I hung them up and I told my staff to, and I didn't sign them. I told my staff to, to, to keep an ear open and see if my patients would say something good about the paintings. <laughs> so I put one in the hallway and I would put one in the hygiene room because the hygiene room was little and I knew the patients had no choice but to stare at that wall, right? And then I would ask my hygienist, hey, did, did Mrs. So-and-so said something? And she would say something. Most of the time, no, because they were terrible. Uh, and then sometimes they would say, oh, yeah, Mrs. So-and-so said something. And that would make my day. Well, you opened yourself up to a big uh, fall there. If You know, yeah. that could have changed the, your career immediately. But being the personality that you are. Yes. Oh, no, I love that I love nose. They fire me up and then I want that even more. And they just make me worse. Like, the nose are not a problem for me. Do you think and that's so, your Chilean background? I don't know. I don't but think I, so clearly, my family is like that. One of the questions I or just you can I'll just interject for a second, but yeah. that's another observation that I that I had about we take our we take our original culture with us, uh, no matter where we go. And yeah. those those colors behind you. I mean, I, I've never been to Chile, but I assume that those, and I think I mentioned, we, we spoke of this, I, I believe, during the Weevil, that your colors really are probably inherently your culture from when you were a child, the Chilean color in art and in craft. And that kind probably of thing. because they're very bright. Yeah, they're, they're yeah very, bright. very. And this is they're what I... Mm -hmm. Right. And they're very colorful. Um, although uh, I think a good mix, I think of this, it truly has to do when I made a trip um, to Belize mm. about seven years ago, which was when I started making my first painting. Mm -hmm. And I was went into the art gallery and I saw this magnificent huge painting which by the way they're nudes um and the colors were magical and i mm. think inspired me so much and which i bought it and it's in my hallway um and i talked to the local people and they said oh everybody here on the island is pretty much an artist like we all think <laughs> and i thought drew i said i'm in the island so I'm going to take that with me because if it's like a magical yeah. thing in the island, if everybody in the island and I felt that way and I came home and I started painting and that's when I started making my first painting. See, there you go. I did not. And, and then, I couldn't yeah. stop any. I could not be that, whatever that was. I just couldn't not be. And then you guys came along and then you <laughs> gave me just, a recipe for a guidance because I have no idea. Well, and, thank you. Um, no, and I think that's fantastic. But no, in my family, there's no one that is an artist. And mm. I think they thought, ah, she's always been a little weird now. <laughs> now it makes sense, right? <laughs> she dentist, now she doesn't want it anymore. And she's an artist. What? Yeah. But that's great. Um, no, I think that I like that sort of Mm -hmm. duality between you know having had a career that um that just had a lot of academic in it mm. and being yeah. a self-taught artist self-taught I say that lightly because I think you know like Sergio says we curate our own education you know being part of yeah. 
yeah. you know, the art next level. I cannot say I'm self-taught because basically all of my teachings mm -hmm. are from Sergio and everything I know that's been helpful and has gotten me here are because I've learned from him because he actively teaches me. But in the yep. sense of, you know, creating art and, and just mm -hmm. kind of painting, um, you know, in that way, I am self-taught. Mm -hmm. And so I... I hope I am just as successful in a way and to try to sort of prove that myth that, you know, oh, mm -hmm. artists, you know, if they don't go to school, they sometimes don't tend to do as well. Or if, you know, they don't come. But that's from... all myth making. That's right. just myth. And you so... know, we, <clears throat> we're driven by our own, you know, desires. Yeah. And, you know, we succeed oh, yeah. because we simply say, uh, no to the no's, yeah. you know, to the people that say, you can't do that. You're from here. You've, you've studied this. You have to take mm -hmm. that path. If any of us had, had said, yeah, you know what? Okay. I agree. Uh, we wouldn't be here today. Yeah. You know, talking mm -hmm. because it's, yeah. it's a, you know, you, we're, we're the classic uh, anti-establishment, you know, yes. and, mm -hmm. industry. And Right. We need to yeah. sift through that and sure. really only pick those gold nuggets because the rest is yeah. just, you know, mm -hmm. not not very encouraging. Um, what, do I, what do you see for the future, in the immediate future, with your work? Me? You're building a studio, yeah? I so, yeah. Beautiful so studio. I'm, <laughs> I'm building a studio and I am trying to sort of distill this information from Sir Hugh to sort of, you know, have this roadmap. I, I do like sort of roadmaps and he helps me see that. Mm. Um, and I see, you know, doing more collections that, um, in fact, I'm starting another collection now that's a little moody, little sultry. Mm -hmm. It's vibrant, but with deep, vibrancy not very colorful and um excellent you know i i think that's also working because that it's mm. also very true um mm -hmm. to myself and i think that i see this going forward and um just exponentially going forward you know mm -hmm. i i have thousands and thousands of people that I want to show my art to. I just now apply to shows this year for the first time to jury shows because mm -hmm. I sort of learn how to go about it. And I applied to 13 jury shows for this year well for done. the first time. I've, I've gotten six yeses. That's I have mm -hmm. four wait lists that hopefully wow. they will turn to yeses. I've gotten only two no's mm -hmm. and I'm still waiting on one. So I So how do the how, uh, how do the goats feel about this? Do they the feel goats neglected? Feel fantastic. Are they are they like <laughs> celebrating go for it, mom? Go for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, it's summertime, so they have a little bit more time on their own. And husband is very supportive to answer um, you know, Drew's question about having support. Yeah, um, My kids are very supportive. Really I good. have two Wonderful. teenagers. They're very supportive. My mom is also very supportive. That's good. Um, but That's what you need. Said, yeah, but having said that, um, just to touch up on that episode of, you know, finding support. Um, I think that's another very important thing. I, I've never known another artist really. And just mm -hmm. through this um, art next level, I've been able to, to find sort of peers and meet people that mm -hmm. I only know dentist, you know, my mm -hmm. husband is a dentist. So oh, I boy. Only, really does run we, in the met. we met in dental <laughs> school. So our next level has given me that, you know, more support because to compliment the, network, yeah. you know, the three people that are like, oh, okay, that looks good. And right. also my accountability partners. That's very important. Yes. I actually have two. Yeah. And they yeah. have been magical. Um, I was going through a little tough time not long ago and they just pulled me right out. And that's the beauty of having you know, accountability mm -hmm. partner. And that's what the program is. Very important. Really good to hear. It's yeah. really yeah. good to hear that, yeah. that your peer group can, and you were open enough to to say, okay, yeah, you know what, I'm going through is it. Accept it, yeah. Uh, and, you know, this is what, why we're talking to you in, in many ways, but also, you know, in reflection of last week, uh, mm -hmm. we're talking about slumps and about, 
mm-hmm. you know, choices that we make and oh, yeah. how we get out of these things and yeah. reinvent ourselves. They got right? me out. They truly so, did. <clears throat> I, in fact, to, to be on, I am a little bit, you know, private and I, I didn't even share those things with almost my entire family. Um, but I went to my accountability partners and mm-hmm. I said, you know what, you guys, this is what's ha- happening. And in fact, I told them I'm going to unplug for a little bit, yada, yada, yada. And they just pulled me right out. And well, they're um, artists, they're artists and they they've gone through it themselves. And that's, yeah. you know, that's the most important thing. So about I am so about about the, and yeah. again, it's from this program, you know, you guys say, yeah. Hey, get an accountability partner. And it, it saved me. It truly did because it could have been detrimental. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm of more course. fired up yeah. than yeah. ever. Yeah. Well, yeah. we have our that. business, we have our business advisors, Mm-hmm. You know, we go to a doctor for advice, right? right? We go, we've always got an accountability person somewhere. Yeah. But when it comes to our art, you right. know, having an accountability person as an artist or yeah. two, yeah. Uh, they understand the ebb and flow of of a business that is n- not, on, uh, you know, like any other business. So, mm-hmm. so it's really important. And I encourage you to keep those going because uh, <clears throat> with them, you know, you, uh, you grow. And they grow. So. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. What's your take, Sergio? World, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. I wanted to touch really quickly on, on something that uh, that you said earlier, that uh, it makes a full circle, which I think uh, is a wonderful thing in your story mm. uh, that I wanted to point out. I've been thinking about it as, as we were chatting. Um, at the beginning, you know, you said how, you know, over this weekend, you had this uh, woman who saw your work and you know the comment this compliment she gave you and like she saw herself in your art right and just a few minutes ago you talk about how when you went to belize you saw this painting and you saw yourself in the painting and, and you purchased the painting and you know it uh mm-hmm. now you have done for somebody else what that artist what did you for did. you oh, back wow. yeah exactly and wow. now that circle is comp- you know it, it i think that gives you wow. another level of confidence coming from this experience this weekend and say, you know, art gave me something, and now art, my art is giving that something to somebody. Yeah, else. exactly. And I think that's a beautiful <clears throat> something. Again, another of those uh, things to small wins, but that mean a lot and oh. that have value. So something for Certainly. you to, to think about. It's, you know, right you are, that. yeah, is exactly. What a great way to uh, sort of finish this this conversation up. It's. You know, I, I like the way Sergio works. I love the way he can see the both, you know, the beginning and the end. Uh, well, we're not near the end yet. Let's hope. Uh, but uh, yeah, and I think you're right. And, you know, there's there there. I believe in this. I think I've talked about it before. I believe in an energy that you have with it within art. You can walk into a gallery and see 100 pieces. And for one reason, you can't understand one is reflective. You just, you, you are drawn to it and you can't, you don't know why it's Mm -hmm. just there. It's there. It, you identify with it and you have to have it. Mm -hmm. You've connected in a really spiritual and sort of cosmic energy kind of way. Mm -hmm. Whereas the rest of the paintings, you know, you could give or take. Yeah. And that's really, that's the, you know, this is what I look for in clients. Mm -hmm. If they're moved, they don't have to tell me why, because I don't think they can explain why. Right. Mm-hmm. And so never doubt that, you know, you know, you know, I, I'm always lost for words why I'm, a, I'm drawn to certain work. Yeah. Yeah. Why I was drawn to your work, Lee, you know, the, uh, rather than the, the figurative work, I was drawn, <clears throat> excuse me, to the, to the fractal work, to the mm-hmm. color. <laughs> it identified with it. Same with Sergio, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it was a certain series of his work. I'm really drawn to others. You not so much. That's not saying anything badly about his work. I just that's a preference, you know. Yeah, yeah. We, we have to. You have to be able to read your audience. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. So as we start getting closer to the wrapping up of our session, I have asked uh, Lee to think about a question that she could ask Drew, <laughs> and this question that she could ask me. So Drew, you got the. You, you are the oh, the next you minutes, always so. put me on the spot. <laughs> so go ahead, Lee. So, uh... well, I I think that it, I guess I'm being just a little bit selfish here, but because I like to remember, <laughs> or I don't like to remember, but I tend to remember what what people said. And actually, 
Drew said something on a podcast that touched me. He um, was doing an interview about, um, you know, sort of having a, a, a support system and all of that. And then he said to this girl, I remember when you reached out to me and um, you had, um, you were wondering how to expand things. And, and I guess she's into like environmental. And, oh, yeah. uh, mm. and then Drew said, and at that time I was on vacation in Canada mm. and I yes. was outside and we had that, that call and you wanted me to, to find a little bit more for your art. And Drew said, and it became so obvious to me that I was sitting in front of the, your solutions. Yes. And yeah. I was like, wow, that was amazing because Drew has that thing where he can always find the perfect solution. But the way he said it, when he said, and it, and it became obvious to me that I was, I was, I was sitting in front of your solutions. <laughs> um, it is we all so are though. That's, it was yeah. so cool. And then, and then, which my questions are coming. And then <laughs> um, I happened to click on something about three years ago. Uh, Sergio did a podcast and he said, what I like to do uh, for some people is um, to have them meet me at the door. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And it had to do with impact. Speaking about uh, speaking of your art with impact. Yeah. And the meet yeah. me at the door meet was the, the M. Uh -huh. And he explained how when he, he has things in his paintings that resonate with people, he is not mm. going to, you know, like Drew says, spell it out for them. I love that. Um, so he says, meet me at the door. And then I guess you guys are going to have to, you know, whoever's listening, go and look into that <laughs> episode because it's fantastic impact. <laughs> And so anyway, I love the meet me at the door. And I remember that. And so I wanted to ask each of you. Good memory. That's about six years ago. Yeah, so yeah. I, did that one. Well, I watched it about a year and a half ago. And it was like back then a three-year-old thing. But the <laughs> okay. meet me at the door just, it was amazing. I but the door like, plays an important part in, in almost every conversation we've ever had. It's, right? and I was There's like, a... I want to do a show. I want to do a show that is called meet me at the door. And I have... <laughs> Yeah. I still have all these ideas for an art show called Meet Me at the Door. But anyway, um, uh -huh. what, yeah. what has someone said, like that lady said to me, I, I think I can, I can almost hear them, that has mm. like grabbed you and you were like, oh my God. Like, I know, Sergio, you do cycles of life. And so has anyone said, oh my gosh something that's that's just really hit that soft spot in a way that just it was it was elating but a little bit painful do you recall something like that i i, can, I do yeah go ahead yeah i can recall like the very first time that i felt that art had power to speak to someone is is exactly a situation that i would really quickly tell you the story I was a young artist, emerging artist. I was doing shows everywhere. If somebody invited me to do a show somewhere, I would say yes. You know, it was like, mm. be as many places yeah. as I could. So I was invited to this church to go and put my artwork uh, and talk about my art. So I said, yes, of course. So I went, I put a show in the back. And then at the end, you know, people went and they were chatting. And then uh, I had a small painting with two hands like this. Uh, I had to raise my hands and I had put, it was a very colorful painting. And then, as I was talking to people, I saw from a distance a young woman who she was probably maybe 16 or 17. Something like that, and she was in front of that painting and she was cr like sobbing, crying on on in front of it. And like, you know, it, it touched me like, I wonder why she's is it that bad of a painting. You know, uh, again, I was very young. I, I, I you know I hadn't heard much feedback on my art back then. So I went and I asked her if everything was OK. And she said. You know, your artwork really touched me because when I walked and I saw this piece, mm. with, there is a, when I was a little girl and my dad left us and say goodbye for the, you know, last time we I saw him, I was a young, a little girl against the windows of my wow. bedroom. Looking you get me it. crying. Where's I know. The she's in the exact same position. Wow. And, and says, yeah. Your painting yeah. took me to that moment. So wow. it took her to a painful memory, but 
I I remember those words like stayed on wow. like 30 years ago, yeah. you know, what I understood for the first time, the power of art, the power of an image, you know, we have Absolutely. no idea. Beautiful. In my studio, I just had made my hands and it was very cool and colorful. I had no idea I could carry for someone <clears throat> that emotional uh, context. And since then, it changed kind of how I look at it. Wow. Yeah, I, t I tell you that that is crazy, man. Mm -hmm. I, uh, but it's such a it's perfect. I mean, I don't even want to give my thing now. No, uh, I mean, it was so beautiful. I mean, I could we can all understand it. We can all understand being a child at the window, the emotions of looking mm -hmm. out, whether it's a, you know, whatever emotion you were feeling yeah. at the time. We all remember that. And I think if you can capture that and have someone cry in front of your work, you know, I always say, oh, to Rothko, you know, sitting in front of a yeah. Rothko painting and people say, well, you know, my kid could paint that. And well, I said, well, they didn't. He did. <laughs> they did. And, yeah. and, uh, and, the, and there's something about the work that is you, you immediately almost want to cry. And there's, mm -hmm. and you don't know why there's an energy, there's an energy. Right. And I'll, and I'll let me answer mine because yes, I yes. know we got to go now. Uh, the best thing I ever said, it was in an article uh, written by a very uh, good critic or something uh, years ago uh, here in Malaysia, actually. And they said, uh, we were talking about, they were trying to describe my work mm -hmm. uh, for the public. And they said only one line, and it was beautiful, and I've used it before. There's a subtle hum in Drew's work. Mm -hmm. You can't hear it. You can feel it. Oh. And I thought, okay, now I've done it. I've, I've gotten to the place where I need to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's exactly what I want. I don't want people to I – want them, I want them to feel it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what we do, right? as art as we want mm -hmm. people to be. So it's a beautiful sort of transition from what Sergio just said, from what you said, Lee earlier about your client resonating with the work, you know, so deeply. They, they don't have to explain why mm -hmm. it's just a feeling. You have to have that feeling. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, so hopefully uh, those were good answers for you, Lee. And, oh, uh, <laughs> More yeah. than, than what I imagined, but I knew I knew I would get some good stuff if I asked Very that. Good. You Very guys good. Are incredible. Just, and I know without a doubt that you impact a lot of people. Well, thank you. Thank you, Lee. And Thanks. I want to say, you know, as we start wrapping it up, uh now for, for reals, we're wrapping it up. Uh thank you so much for joining us, Lee. It has been such a pleasure chatting with you. You are a confident artist, you are a confident yes. person. You, uh, you know, you and I came to this country around the same age, 16, 17. Yeah, I was 16 when I came here. You know, there, there are some similarities there. And uh, to be in a foreign country and, you know, to fight the system, to get where you're at, and then to pursue a dream uh, also where you had already a successful career that you could have continued doing forever, you know, mm -hmm. to say, I'm going to go 360 and do something else. That speaks of your determination. That yes. speaks also of how far you're going to go. So keep working. The, the history yes. of art is full of amazing artists who come to their career later in life and they become amazing. They do amazing things uh, in Absolutely. the world. So you have a whole life ahead of you, Lee. Uh, so yes. keep, keep on rocking, keep on making great work. Oh, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Lee. Uh, you know, I was excited when Sergio suggested that we speak to you. Uh, we knew it would be colorful and <laughs> yeah. you're awfully colorful. Uh, cool. We appreciate your involvement in our, you know, in the group, in Sergio's group, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and especially with Dr. Yanina and everybody. You know, you, you help round out that, that entire group. And the, yeah. the accountability partners, I think, is are the, the one point I bring from all of this conversation, if you're a young artist or a new artist and so forth, get involved with somebody that is a mentor or a mentee uh, that you can bounce ideas from. Great point, Lee. And I, uh, I'm going to stress that more, you know, mm -hmm. as I talk more about this, this kind of work and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, thank and you. Yeah, and Lee, before we go, for our friends who are listening to the podcast who cannot see your names right under the screen, uh, please tell everyone where can they find you on social media, particularly on Instagram, where can they see your work, where can they connect with you, and also your website. 
Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I want to say you guys are incredible mentors and, uh, you know, I can have determination, but without your direction and encouragement, I still couldn't go anywhere. So I appreciate it. Thank you. And, thank you. We uh, appreciate it. You guys it. can find me on Lee Morrison Art. And that's for my Instagram, just Lee Morrison Art. And then my website is uh, Lee Morrison Art dot com. Excellent. 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 Well, we invite Sergio? our friends, to, please. Uh, yeah, to, we, yeah, you guys can find me at Sergio Gomez Art, of course, and Drew uh, at Drew Harris Art as well. Yes. I uh, want to say, uh, please, uh, to all friends who are listening, if you found this episode to be inspiring, uh, do us a big favor, share it with your friends. Feel free to connect yes. with either three of us. Uh, connect with Lee if you enjoy this episode. Send her a DM. Check out her work. And uh, we appreciate you as well. You have also some ideas of guests that you would like to see here in the podcast. Please send us also a note about that. Uh, we yeah. would love to have them here and have another wonderful conversation like we just did with Lee. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you at the next level.